What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. First, Malcolm Jamal Warner reads an African story about an old, old man and a little boy. Inside this old, old man, he said, lives a very little boy. Then, it's the story of a little boy who wanted to learn to read. I think there's a secret in those books. And Denise Nicholas reads about a special summer in Knoxville, Tennessee. I always like summer best. Storytime is made possible by the grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Kino's favorite, Kathy's favorite, and your favorite. All right. Mm. <laughs> hi, we're here. Oh, hi, hi Kathy. Hi, Kino. Hey, hey, hey. Hi. <laughs> hey, who's in the mood for a peanut butter and cracker sundae? Oh, I am. I am, too. Ooh, my favorite, peanut butter and raisins. There you go. Ooh, and my favorites, peanut butter bananas and chocolate sprinkles. <laughs> oh, and my favorite, peanut butter and pickles. Oh. oh, it's really good, really. I'm sure it is. I'm so sure I don't even need to try it. Well, my favorite is just good old, plain old goober butter. Goober butter? So oh, it's peanut butter. Goober is an African word for peanut. Hmm, goober. I think I like that word better than peanut. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I brought a story with me that takes place in Africa. You guys want to hear it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, now, you know it's February, and February is Black History Month. And that's when we celebrate the history and the stories of African Americans. And this African story is called The Old, Old Man and the Very Little Boy. It's written by Christine L. Franklin and illustrated by Taria Schaefer. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Oh. Once there was an old, old man. His hair was the color of the clouds. His face was wrinkled and as brown as the deep garden soil. His feet were tough and wide, and his old toes spread like stubby fingers because he had always walked barefoot wherever he went. Each morning, when the sun made enough light to warm his bones, the old, old man sat on a stump and waited. The women of the village passed him on their way to dig in the gardens. Will the rains come soon, old father? asked the young woman in a loud voice. The old, old man closed his eyes and nodded wisely. Soon it will rain, shouted the women with great smiles. They walked down the trail, singing about sunshine and rain and all the things that make life good. The young men gathered around to sharpen their spears. They chanted magic spells and sang hunting songs. And though the old, old man knew all of the spells and all of the songs, he kept silent. Will we find food, old father? Asked one young man. The old, old man closed his eyes and nodded wisely. Full bellies tonight, shouted the young men. They left for the forest, singing about sharp spears and roasted meat and all of the things that make life good. Good morning, old father, said a bright little voice. 
And to the old, old man, it sounded like the twittering of a bird. Good morning, old father, said the voice a little louder, and the old man knew who it was. It was a very little boy who came to sit with him every day. Mother sent this, said the boy, as he unfolded a banana leaf. Inside was a roasted sweet potato. The old, old man ate the potato slowly. Most of his teeth were gone. He licked his fingers one by one and politely smacked his lips when he was done. Ah. Each day began like this. Tell me a story, the little boy begged in a loud voice, for the old, old man could scarcely hear. The old, old man smiled a wide, toothless grin and closed his eyes. When I was young and proud, he always began. His voice was as dry as the dust. He told the same tales again and again, but the little boy never grew tired of them. The old, old man told stories of hunting and bravery and the sweetness of love. The little boy danced in the dirt before him. Ay, 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 yip, 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 he yelled as he whirled and hopped and threw sticks at a tree. The old, old man smiled sweetly and remembered many things. Were you ever a little boy, old father? The little boy asked one day. The old, old man laughed a crackly laugh. Come close, he whispered. The little boy leaned over and listened. The old, old man thumped his chest with a leathery fist. Inside this old, old man, he said, lives a very little boy. <laughs> the little boy laughed and laughed. It was the funniest thing he ever heard. The old man laughed, too, until one silver tear trickled down his wrinkled cheek. Soon the sun plunged toward the western horizon, and the little boy's mother came for him. Good night, old father, said the little boy. Tomorrow we will laugh again. Tomorrow, said the old, old man, you will be too old to sit with me. The little boy laughed as he walked down the trail with his mother. <laughs> he knew he would never be old. Around and around, the seasons danced, wet and dry, wet and dry. The old, old man and the very little boy laughed and sang and chanted magic spells together. And the boy grew like a banana tree. Then one day, the boy's father gave him a spear of his very own. Today you will hunt with the men, said his father. See my beautiful spear, shouted the boy, as he passed the old, old man on the way to the forest. The old, old man smiled and nodded wisely. From that time on, the boy saw his friend every morning before the hunt, but he did not sit with the old, old man again. gray, rainy day, the old, old man died and rested with the others who had died before him. At first, the boy missed the old, old man, but the seasons chased each other as they always had, and he
he forgot his friend. The boy learned to throw a spear and shoot an arrow. And soon, he was a young man. The young man hunted and danced with the other young men and told stories by the fire each night. When it was time to take a wife, he chose the finest girl in the village to be his bride. The seasons changed twice, and their first child was born. <laughs> then many seasons passed, and there were many children. And the man was proud and brave, and life was good. Many more years passed. And one day, the man left the hunting to the younger men, for he only wanted to sit on the old stump and warm himself in the sun. Soon, the little boys gathered at his feet. A story, old father, a story, the littlest boy cried. And the old man placed the boy on the stump beside him. When I was young, and proud, he began, and the boys were quiet, and the smooth breeze carried his old voice across the village as he told tales of hunts and battles and sang songs of bravery and love. Were you ever a little boy? asked the littlest boy. The old man chuckled and coughed and slapped his bare legs with both hands. I will tell you a secret, he whispered. And the little boys gathered near to listen. Inside this old, old man is a very little boy. The boys laughed and laughed. Their mouths were wide open with joy. You were old yesterday, and the day before, and the day before, said one of the little boys. You are the oldest man we know. We see your wrinkled face, said one boy. We see your rough hands, said another boy. We see your white feet, said another. You have been old for a long time, said the littlest boy. You have been old forever. The old, old man grinned a toothless grin and shook his finger at the boys. Tomorrow, he said, you will understand. Tomorrow, you will be old men just like me. <laughs> the little boys laughed and laughed as they danced in the dirt before him. They knew they would never be old. The old, old man laughed, too, until one silver tear trickled down his wrinkled cheek. With a crooked finger, he wiped away the tear and smiled and remembered many things. Deep within his old, old heart, a very little boy was dancing in the dirt. The end. Mm. Huh. Mm. Gee, that was a great story. The old man told the little boy stories about when he was young. And when the little boy got old, he did the same thing. Yeah, he told stories to all the children about when he was young. Yeah, the, and that's one way we remember history, isn't it? I mean, older people remember all the things that have happened to them, and they tell younger people. And the stories get passed from the old to the young. Yep, yep. 
When Africans were brought to this country as slaves many years ago, they brought their stories with them. But slaves weren't allowed to learn to read or write, so they had to tell their stories out loud. And that didn't really change for a long time, even after slavery ended. Wow, that wasn't fair at all. No, it wasn't. But there was one very famous African-American named Booker T. Washington who was determined to learn how to read and write. Here's a book about when he was a little boy a long, long time ago, and he did just that. The book is called More Than Anything Else. The story is by Marie Bradby, Pictures by Chris K. Soonpeet. Before light, while the stars still twinkle, Papa, my brother John, and I leave our cabin and take the main road out of town headed to work. The road hugs the ridge between the Kanawa River and the mountain. We traveled it by lantern. My stomach rumbles, for we had no morning meal. But it isn't really a meal I want, though I would not turn one down. More than anything else, I want to learn to read. But for now, I must work. From sun up to sundown, we pack salt in barrels at the salt works. A white mountain of salt rises above Papa's head. All day long, we shovel it, but it refused to grow smaller. We stop only to grab a bite. Sweet potatoes and corn cakes that Papa has brought along in his coat pocket. As I eat every crumb of my meal, I stare at that white mountain. Salt is heavy and rough. The shiny white crystals leave cuts on your hands, your arms, your legs, the soles of your feet. My arms ache from lifting the shovel, but I do not think about the pain there. I think about the hunger still in my head. Reading. Now, I've seen some people, young and old, do it. I am nine years old, and I know if I had a chance, I could do it too. I think there's a secret in those books. In the chill of the evening, I follow Papa and John back up the road, stopping to catch a frog. The frog wiggles and slips, but I hold on tight and let go when I want to. There is something different about this place where we live now. All people are free to go where they want and do what they can. Book learning swims freely around in my head, and I hold it as long as I want. Back in town, coal miners, rivermen, loggers, and coopers gather around the corner. They are worn out as me, but full of tales. I see a man reading a newspaper aloud, and all doubt falls away. I have found hope, and it is as brown as me. I see myself the man. And as I watch his eyes move across the paper, it is as if I know what the black marks mean, as if I am reading, as if everyone is listening to me, and I hold that thought in my hands. I will work until I am the best reader in the county. Children will crowd around me, and I will teach them to read. But Papa taps me on the shoulder. Come on. And John tugs at my shirt, they don't see what I see. They don't see what I can be. We hurry home. Mama, I have to learn to read, I say. She holds my hand and feels my hunger racing fast as my heart. It is a small, 
a blue the color of midnight. She gives it to me one evening in the corner of our cabin, pulling it from under the clothes that she washes and irons to make a little money. She doesn't say where she got it. She can't read it herself, but she knows this is something called the alphabet. She thinks it's a singy kind of thing, a song on paper. After work, even though my shoulders still ache and my legs are stained with salt, I study my book. I stare at the marks and try to imagine their song. I draw the marks on the dirt floor and try to figure out what sounds they make, what story their pictures tell. But sometimes I feel I'm trying to jump without legs. And my thoughts get slippery, and I can't keep up with what I want to be and how good I will feel when I learn this magic and how people will look up to me. I can't catch the tune of what I see. I get a salt shoveling pain and feel my dreams are slipping away. I have got to find him, that newspaper man. I look everywhere. Finally, I find that brown face of hope. He tells me the song, the, the sounds the marks make. I jump up and down singing it. I, I shout and laugh like when I was baptized in the creek. I have jumped into another world, and I am saved. But I have to know more. Tell me more, I say. What's your name, he asks. Booker, I say. And then he takes the sound of my name and draws it on the ground. I linger over that picture. I know I can hold it forever. The end. Whoa, so he learned how to read and write, huh? He sure did, and he became a great teacher who wrote many books, and he started a famous school named the Tuskegee Institute. It's in Alabama. Wow. And at the Tuskegee Institute, another very famous African-American, George Washington Carver, figured out lots and lots of brand new things that you could do with peanuts, including make peanut butter. Whoa, that's cool. Hey, Kino, it's time for us to go to my friend's house now. Oh, OK. Hey, thanks, Malcolm. And thanks for the goober butter and pickle sundae. <laughs> oh. It's really good, really. Bye-bye. See bye you guys bye. later. Bye. <laughs> oh, hi, Kathy. Hi, Denise. Hi. This is my friend Kino. He really, really loves stories. Yeah, I love them. Well, good, because I've got a very special one, only it's a poem. Oh, well, I love them, too. Good. Did you know that this is Black History Month? Oh, yeah. Well, we've been celebrating it all day. Well, this poem kind of reminds me of my own history in my trips to the South, and it's written by a friend of mine, Nikki Giovanni, and it's called Knoxville, Tennessee, and the illustrations are by Larry Johnson. I always like summer best. You can eat fresh corn from Daddy's garden and okra and greens and cabbage and lots of barbecue and buttermilk homemade ice cream.
research picnic. And listen to gospel music outside. At the church homecoming. And go to the mountains with your grandmother. And go barefooted. And be warm all the time. when you go to bed and sleep. The end. That was really good. Yeah, I liked it too. Well, sharing stories is how we pass on our history from father or mother to son or daughter, from friend to friend, from relative to relative. We can learn lots of important things from our history, can't we? Yeah, we can. I've learned lots of important stuff from my grandpa, and he sometimes tells me stuff that his grandpa told him. There you go. Yeah. Now, I hope you learn a lot this Black History Month, and I've selected a couple of story picks to help you. Oh, cool. The first one is called Satchmo's Blues, and it's the story of Louis Armstrong and how his dream of playing the trumpet came true. The second is a story of how Zora Hurston listened to stories told to her and went on to become a world-renowned writer. And it's called Zora Hurston and the China Berry Tree. Well, thanks a lot for the special poem, Denise. Yeah, thanks. History makes great stories. Mm -hmm. You're both very welcome. And remember, keep, keep a story, story in your heart. Bye-bye. <laughs> Storytime books are The Old Old Man and the Very Little Boy. More than anything else, Knoxville, Tennessee, Satchmo's Blues. Zora Hurston and the China Berry Tree. You can find these and other books at your local library. Storytime is made possible by a grant from Holland and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Storytime is a production of KCET Los Angeles.